Hi everybody and welcome to another digital piano comparison video here on Miriam Pianos on YouTube. Today we have two brand new models from Kawhi and Roland. They line up quite nicely, but they are far from the same. We're gonna be looking at all the differences between the ES520 and Roland's FP60X. Uh, hopefully by the end of that, if either one of these are on your shopping list, we may have either changed your mind or help you feel even better about the direction you were already headed. We're gonna be talking about its action, we're gonna be comparing its features, its connectivity, and of course, sampling many of its principal patches. So thank you very much for tuning in. If it's the first time that you're joining us here on the channel, hit that subscribe and notification bell, especially if you find this helpful and or entertaining or useful, anything at all. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think as you're uh, watching it along the way. Without further ado, let's get started with the comparison right away. Well, today we have the battle of the middle children in a lot of ways. On my left is the FP60X, on my right is Kawhi's ES520. The 520 fits in between the ES110 and the 920, the FP60X fits between the 30X and the 90X, and they both, uh, you know, can be seen as either uh, you know, just coming short um, of their more expensive brethren, uh, or being massive improvements over uh, the entry point. I know the FP10 is, is below the FP30, but I think of that instrument almost being in its own kind of category from a price standpoint and functionality standpoint. So we're gonna be going through comparison of these instruments. We're gonna talk about the sound first. I generally always prefer to start with the sound. We'll do an action comparison, and then we're gonna get into other uh, feature comparisons such as how the apps work. Uh, you know, how you would use and operate these instruments with some of the mobile apps that both Roland and Kawhi make available for these instruments free of charge. And we'll also review some of the accessories that come with these instruments, the different packages and configurations that you can get them working in. Uh, let's start by just hearing the two instruments and I've got them both set in their default piano sound. On the ES520, that means we're listening to the SKEX. Uh, that is arriving to you uh, with 192 notes worth of polyphony. It's the progressive harmonic, harmonic imaging engine uh, that uh, Kawhi has. And you are going to be hearing it through both the stereo line outs as well as uh, stereo microphones. And we'll tell you when you're listening to one versus the other. So you have a chance to sample both the speakers and the line outs. And then we're going to come over here to the FP60X where we've got 256 notes worth of polyphony. Uh, and we're also doing the same thing. We've got the microphones on the instrument as well as the line outs. We'll tell you when you're hearing those. 
The FP60X uh, is outgunned in terms of the sheer power on the speakers. Uh, it's 13 watts per side versus 20 watts per side over on the Kawai. So we'll see if you can hear a difference between that. Uh, certainly I have my thoughts and I'll share that, but I'm gonna let you hear it first. Uh, and we will start over here with the Kawai. So they both have very different characters. Uh, they also are both equipped with the ability to heavily edit the sound that you have. Everything from how the speaker is behaving to how the piano sound is behaving. So the default sound is hardly where you need to stop if you aren't quite satisfied. If you've already found something about the FP60X that you really liked, considered it a, a non-negotiable and that's the route you went, and you're like, eh, it's good, but I'd love to explore it more. Well, you can get in there with Piano Designer, you can get in there uh, with My Stage, which comes with a, a number of presets that are really easy to use, kind of uh, manipulates that supernatural engine in a, in a nice, uh, you know, user-friendly way. You're going to be able to get a sound out of this instrument that you're really happy with. Kawhi does the same thing. In terms of editing the sound, since we're talking about that, Roland has some advantages over the 520. It's got a three-band equalizer on it, and you've got the ability to edit that three-band equalizer. So in terms of making some really super quick, easy edits, there's two ways uh, that you're able to do that without having to get into the app really easily on this instrument. So you've got your full EQ. You can make it really nice and bright. Make it sound like an old LP or a nice full tone with just a very slight V to it. So that's the super quick way to get in there and do some editing. Then you've got my stage, which is something that shows up on the LX uprights within the Roland line as well. Which gives you a series of presets. So piano recital is the first one. at hall stage. Lakeside Studio. Heritage Hall. Uh, 
that lounge concert. And so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, so this is a really easy way to call up some of those presets. And then you can dive even deeper, if you want to, by getting into the Piano Designer app. So those are a couple of ways that you can modify and play around with the sound on that FP60 so that you're getting something you're pretty happy with. But anyway, that's back to the default. Over on the ES520, you have a similar set of functionality, but you're gonna have to dig a little bit into either the menus or the software app to be able to access it. In case you were wondering whether you can sense or tell the difference between the 20 watts and the 13 watts in person, oh yeah. This is the same speaker system that the ES920 gets. So whereas Roland uh, kind of reserves the larger, beefier speakers for the FP90X, uh, Kawhi actually puts these on the 520 and the 920. We're talking about how to manipulate the sound. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. For one, uh, if you press up on the menu key, uh, you are going to get uh, access to the virtual technician. That's the second area of the menu. And then you just press your value and then you're in. So there you can edit touch curve, which I just have on normal, voicing, which I have on normal, damper resonance, damper noise, string resonance, key off effect, fallback noise, hammer delay, the top board, decay time, minimum touch, uh, the temperament, stretch tuning, uh, individual user key volumes, half pedal adjust, soft pedal adjust, and then you're back to the beginning. So that's how you can get in and edit it without ever leaving that. A few extra steps versus something that's as intuitive as just reaching for a three band EQ or just flipping through my stage on a nice, you know, easy to see uh, display. But then uh, on the Kawaii, you can get into their app uh, which actually combines both what used to be just the Virtual Technician app as well as uh, their sound museum. So Kawhi's completely overhauled uh, their app, and I'm going to compare the apps a little bit later. I don't want to get too far off the beaten track in terms of talking about the sound. Um, but I will say uh, that for people who are uh, kind of looking at the ES520 and 920 going, um, what's really new about this versus the ES8 other than the aesthetic uh, redesign? Well, one of the big, big things is actually the app control. And for people who are getting really used to using remote apps uh, to access functionality, it's a big improvement. In fact, what you can now get on your phone to control the 520 or the 920 is exactly the same uh, OS as what uh, they use in the e, uh, CA79 and 99 uh, side panels. So it's exactly the same software which you now have Bluetooth remote access to control some of the other instruments such as the 520, 920. Um, so there's the uh, piano tone for you. The 520 certainly sounds like it's got a more open tone and that there's a lot more bloom around that sound. It's a little hard for me to pick apart how much of that is a function of the larger speakers. or whether that's actually the signal uh, that's a little different.
but it's certainly very lush, it's very colorful, and it's very natural. Uh, it has really a remarkable non-digitalness to it. on the Roland I mean I know this sound engine really well I know the chip really well this by the way is using Roland's new BMC chip um, So the fidelity of this signal is definitely improved over the former FP60. But I think in this case, the size of the speakers on the FP60 aren't doing the tone engine justice. I know that the signal coming out of here is a really beautiful, Kind of a nice dark tone, really a bit of a New York Steinway E sound to the Roland. But it does feel a little bit boxed in when we're just evaluating it through the onboard speakers. At least compared to the ES520. Let's listen to a few other sounds. Let's flip over to uh, the 1976 suitcase. This is a famous Roland, kind of their flagship Rhodesy kind of patch that winds up on virtually all of their instruments. <laughs> So that's uh, Kawhi's classic EP as well, EP2. Most of these sounds have not been updated for the ES520. This is pretty much the same sound set uh, that you're going to get. Uh, it's going to be quite similar to, say, a CN29 or a CN39, something in that. Uh, general range. And what we found when we were doing the FP30X review was that because of the new chipset, Roland really had 
ratcheted up the complexity of a lot of samples, not just uh, the acoustic piano, uh, but I was hearing just extreme differences in even things like the harpsichord, and some of the pads were a lot more lush. There's tons going on. And when we get over to something like the synths sound on the FP60X, it's super thick. Now this is starting to remind me a lot of some of the really lush pads that you get out of uh, the, some of the Yamaha larger stage pianos. Super detailed delay. Man, that just makes me want to go riffing off on like that Japanese fusion stuff. So much fun. Lots of really beautiful lush pads in there to play around with that are good enough that I would be finding ways and places to actually use that in production, uh, you know, on, on certain tracks. Uh, so uh, I think in terms of the updatedness of the sound, Roland definitely has put more into getting this instrument full of the latest and greatest patches that it's building to take advantage of the BMC chip uh, that is in there. Uh, like I said, on the Kawhi side, really, it's still a very good, still a very functional, but it's a sound set that we're quite familiar with. We've had it, uh, I think, for about two or three, no, probably closer to four years, four years that uh, it's been on the scene. So at some point, I'm sure we're going to get the Harmonic Imaging XL chip into some of these portable uh, Kawhi's, but for the time being, we've got the Progressive Harmonic Imaging that still gives us quite a nice acoustic piano tone. So in terms of the quantity of the sounds and the updatedness of the sounds, Roland really does uh, just outrank the Kawhi uh, in that regard. So everything that it's not uh, bringing us in terms of the um, body uh, out of the speaker system, it's giving us in the variety of tone and just the general complexity and, and the fidelity of the sounds available uh, out of it. Another big difference uh, between sounds is the quantity as well. Roland's got the full General MIDI 2 uh, sound bank that is available through the FP60X, whereas the ES520 does not. So um, quantity goes to Roland. I would say on an overall level, the quality goes to Roland, maybe with the exception of the acoustic piano, because that SKEX sample set and the harmonic imaging engine they built around that uh, is just so convincingly acoustic in nature. I still think I feel for that one particular thing, probably tip towards a Kawhi, but for virtually everything else, I think the Roland just sounds and feels a little bit more up to date uh, with uh, those pads, uh, with some of those uh, leads and the variety and, and just the texture uh, that you get out of some of those uh, EPs. So to sum up the sound before we move on to the action, um, yeah, you know, this is going to come down to what you see yourself using this for the most. If you're an acoustic player and you're looking for a portable digital piano to go and basically play acoustic gigs on, and 95% of what you do is going to be acoustic piano related, and especially if you're going to be using onboard speakers more often than plug-in PA, uh, to me this is a no-brainer. The ES520 is going to deliver uh, overall, uh, I think, a more convincing acoustic experience because of the combination of the onboard speakers as well as the fact that that, that rich SK sample is its a really hard to beat uh, sample set and tone engine out there uh, for that. However, if you're over on the Roland and you're going to be using acoustic piano in combination with Rhodes, combination with pads, you're playing in a band, uh, and especially if you're going to be using any of those sounds in any sort of a recording or production sense, 
man, the Roland uh, at, generally, I would say, is a more well-rounded offering uh, when it comes to uh, that. And, and of course, that BMC chip uh, that's in there with a lot of the latest generation Rolands is really producing uh, just an insane level of fidelity uh, on the sound. So let's move on now to action. We're going to throw some of those specs up on the screen for you to take another quick look, and we will back, be back in just a quick moment. Two actions on these instruments, neither one of them are particularly new, but neither one's particularly old. They've been in the marketplace for four or five years, so there's quite a bit of um, track record there. Uh, the failure rate on these uh, actions is super low, and I know them and like them both uh, quite a bit. We got the PHA4 on the FP60X, that's the same one that you're going to find in the FP30X, and the FP10, and the RP102 and the RP501, and the F701, and the RP701. It's, they, they use it uh, rather uniformly across almost all of their entry and mid-range. It's got escapement, it's got a triple sensor. I like how it plays quite a bit for a wide variety of musics. Uh, maybe with the exception of certain classical music, I think I still generally prefer um, how the Kawhi feels a little bit more. Uh, but the Roland has a beautiful texture on it, on the white key and the black. It's a nice balance. Uh, Casio is the other company that's uh, kind of gone down the road of giving the, both the white key and the black key some texture. I like the balance that Roland has struck between not going overboard uh, and still giving you some actual texture that isn't uh, just you know visual, but that's got some function to it. Um, and the uh, the escapement that is on the PH4, uh, the PHA4, uh, I do think gives you some nice control, especially when you're playing softly. One of the big differences on the FP60X with the action, and this is kind of a combination action tone engine improvement, and I saved it for action, not put in the first section, is that the lower levels of dynamic expression on the Roland are much better than what I've experienced in the past. I always had the comment that Roland sort of had this compressing effect uh, that it kind of felt like regardless of how you played the Roland, even though you were getting some tonal shifts, the actual dynamic shift uh, was relatively narrow, which if you're plugged into a PA system actually is a good thing. But if you're trying to play a little more expressively, especially if you're playing solo, you want uh, a, a more of a range between your low lows and your high highs. You're starting to really get that now. Uh, the FP30X, that I noticed that big time when I was comparing it to the FP30. FP60X, I'm feeling it a lot there too. And their latest LX, LX 7056 and 8, big time. Like it's, it's a really uh, welcome improvement, uh, that dynamic uh, expression range. Uh, and I don't know whether that's specifically because of the BMC chip or they just decided to address that at the same time as those architectural changes. Over on the Kawhi, we've got the RHC2. I think that stands for Responsive Hammer Compact 2. This is the same one that goes into the KDP-110. It's got a triple sensor but does not have escapement. Um, if you are playing a lot of quiet, fairly complex, fairly lush, uh, sound, you know, classical pieces or jazz perhaps, uh, you do miss that escapement a little bit uh, versus what you get on the RH3 up in the ES920, but I don't think it's enough that it is a big deal breaker. Rather than having any sort of uh, a deliberate ivory texture or ebony texture on the black and white keys, it's got a matte micro texture, so it's still providing the same kind of grip, uh, but there's no visual similarity to the ivory or the ebony, uh, unlike over on the Roland where they are, have actually attempted uh, to make those surfaces look somewhat like their natural equivalents. 
The repetition speed on both is really good. And because I know this has uh, become a bit more of a, a, a factor, I'm gonna kill the volume on both of these right now. By the way, I always set all the volumes to exactly the same on any instrument that I'm evaluating. Uh, and in this case, it was about 70% on each of the instruments. Now I'm just gonna let you hear the mechanical sound of the key. So there's the FP60X. So slightly different there. The Roland is actually sounds like it's a little bit louder on the downstroke, but quieter on the upstroke. Kwai is the opposite. It's more cushioned on the way down but you hear more of it on the way back up. We'll get those back up there. All right, we're good back and we'll go again. So that's about it on the action. Uh, we're gonna move on now to the third section. We're gonna just talk about features, connectivity, and other accessories. Thank you so much again for being with us for this comparison. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, so the third uh, thing that we're gonna cover, uh, section we're gonna cover is, is gonna be features, and I'm gonna start with the apps because mm, this, is a, this is a mixed bag. When we got the ES520 out of the box, uh, the firmware version was 1.01, .01, so it would be really good for anybody who gets this instrument to just check the firmware version. You want this to be 1.1, not 1.01, .01, and you can get the firmware uh, updater or downloader uh, quite easily from Kawhi website. All you have to do is just Google, you know, 520 firmware update. You get it, uh, you plug the instrument in. What's nice is you can do this entirely with a USB cable. You don't have to preload like a USB key because some devices you have to do that and it's a little bit annoying. Uh, so you don't have to go through that step. You go through about three, four steps. It takes five minutes and you update that. Why bother going through the firmware update? Because if you don't, you can't use the remote control app that Kawhi builds for this thing. So, and you, defi and you definitely want to do that because the improved uh, app is really well designed. Um, I don't usually give Kawhi a lot of credit for its um, wireless apps. They're usually a little bit uh, more basic than some of the other competitors. But in this case, I love what they did. Um, not only is it visually super slick, but they have combined the kind of the remote control functionality with the full editing capability that you would normally want out of the virtual technician. And so for the SKEX, we can get in there. There's the concert grand if we want virtual technician. We can edit and now we've got touch curve, voicing, damper, all of the things, and they're right there, super, super easy to adjust. Your reverb is right there, your tuning, your transpose, everything is there. You also have presets, just like uh, kind of the my stage setting uh, that you might have enjoyed over on uh, the, uh, the Roland FP60X. Now these virtual technician settings are not specific to the model, so you're gonna find that if you go piano variation concert, these are different models. So here's, there's concert. There's jazz. then within those, you still have all of the default technician, or sorry, virtual technician presets. So noiseless, deep resonance. Light resonance. Soft. Brilliant, clean. Etc. Etc. And then you've got your reverb. So 
that is really very super easy to use and you can have a favorite setting. Then you've got your EX Kronzergrand and your Upright, so those are your three uh, kind of models that are in that uh, Harmonic Imaging Tone engine. Your menu along the right side, that's where you can access Bluetooth settings. You've got your forehand mode or your split, uh, your system, um, there's your forehand mode, right side piano, left side piano. Then you get into your sounds. So down the left side, you've got all of the different categories. You've got uh, grand piano, e piano, organ, pipe organ, mallets, uh, strings, pads, and bass. So. And there is no lag whatsoever. So whoever has done the programming on this, they've really done this super well. Uh, it also splits into these different categories, so it's easy to find that way. And it comes preloaded with a crap ton. Maybe that's not the best thing to say. It comes preloaded with a ton of music to play back. It's organized into lesson books. So, like I said, really well done. Um, massive improvement over what was Kawhi, Kawhi was using before and easy to connect if you've got the, the firmware updated to 1.1. So please be aware of that. Over on Roland side, we've got two apps that you can use. You can use uh, their uh, technician piano designer app, which gets in and allows you to do all of those things. Or you've got uh, the piano every day, which allows you to access the rhythms, no rhythms over here by the way, uh, as well as the remote control functionality. The interface is definitely uh, kind of less pretty than what you get over on the Kawaii, but you can still navigate this fairly well if you know where you're going. So there's keyboards and tones, there's the different categories, <laughs> And then this one is geared uh, really towards uh, a personal practicing aid. So very different focuses. Uh, you've got your auto accompaniment in here as well. So that's the Roland app. Uh, a little, uh, I would say just a little less intuitive, but still uh, quite functional. And again, very easy to connect. They've really made the pairing uh, process between devices uh, much easier than it was in the previous generation. You've got a hold uh, and a pair button here, and that takes care of the pairing entirely. Let's get on to connectivity. Both of these have Bluetooth audio that you can stream to them. Both are Bluetooth MIDI compatible, so you can uh, connect that uh, to your computer. They both have the quarter inch uh, outputs, which is great. They both have audio inputs, uh, so you can uh, connect sort of an external device. Uh, and both are through that 3.5 uh, mil jack. The FP60X has a microphone input, so that might be something uh, that some people find quite useful, especially if you accompany yourself or do some basic singer-songwriter stuff in a live setting. You do not have that over on the ES520. Both of these come with available matching stands. Uh, you can get them with fixed triple pedal systems, and they both come with uh, floating triple pedal systems as, as an option as well. 
there is one hidden functionality, and I'm really uh, glad that somebody tipped me off to this uh, during the FP30X review. Somebody put it in the comment and said, hey, wait a second, I heard that the FP30X and the FP60X actually have a full USB uh, MIDI interface function built in, even though Roland's not talking about this. And I have plugged the FP60 in, and without having to download a driver, uh, it automatically detected that this was in fact a USB audio interface, meaning that if you have this plugged into your computer, you can take the audio straight out of this into a DAW without the use of an interface, kind of a big deal, and you can also play audio directly from the computer straight into these speakers without having to use the Bluetooth. The reason that Roland has not put this in uh, may be the same type of a dynamic that we had with the FP10 being compatible with Piano Designer. Sometimes Roland leaves open certain functionalities that they plan uh, to exploit in a different way down the road and they don't generally reveal it to the public. That means that at any point a, an OS update might actually kill that functionality. So I hesitate to say that this is a feature that you really should be dependent on, but for the time being, if you plug this in uh, to a computer, this is going to give you a USB MIDI interface, just the same way uh, as quite a few of the portable Yamahas already do. So we've tested it on the FP60X. I assume that it's gonna be the same on the 30X and the 90X, but we will do that uh, as we get to them. This is not a functionality that is available on the ES520. Very last point before we uh, kind of sum these two up. There is a weight difference between these instruments. Kawhi is definitely focused on getting this as light as possible. This is 32 pounds. Uh, it's almost 43 pounds over here for the FP60X. So it's a third heavier. If you were carrying this a lot, I could see that making a difference. If it's only the occasional um, hoof, uh, around to whatever, a rehearsal or whatever, probably not going to be that critical. So what do we have here? Well, with the ES520, we've got an instrument that really has put the focus on the acoustic piano performance and everything that you can get out of the onboard speakers. Uh, I think it's a full sound, I think that it's an easily controllable sound. I think it's really sensitive, uh, super dynamic. Uh, if you're gonna be playing this instrument 95% of the time as an acoustic piano, and especially if you have a need to be carrying it around with you for rehearsals or gigging or anything like that, um, and it's that and maybe the occasional Rhodes, I think the ES520 is a very compelling choice because I think it's a full tone, uh, the fidelity of the sound is great, You've got your quarter inch outs and it's light, it's easy to carry. Uh, for a player who's looking for a well-rounded instrument with a, a wide range of really high quality tones, the FP60 uh, you know, clearly excels in this area. Uh, not only is the acoustic piano improved over what you were getting out of the FP60 uh, to this XP60X, but you've got uh, like hundreds of tones that are accessible uh, through here, especially when you include the general MIDI 2 sound bank. You've also got mic volume in, and if you're gonna be using this in conjunction with a DAW, if this is gonna be kind of a, an in-studio, but also on the road type of rig, um, the uh, USB audio interface is a pretty big deal as well. Uh, so lots of stuff going on with the FP60. I would say uh, almost every other application, except if you are gonna be primarily using this as a piano, um, the FP60 is kind of a, a hands down uh, favorite. So I hope you have really enjoyed this comparison between the 520 and the FP60X. Watch out for more of such comparisons. We're gonna be doing the 920 versus the FP90X. We're also gonna be doing a side-by-side -side of the 60X and its predecessor, the FP60. So you can really hear the difference in sound and how much of a uh, differentiator that BMC chip really truly is. If it is the first time that you have caught us here on YouTube at Miriam Pianos, we would really love it if you hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you can come join us every single time we come out with a new video. We're always coming out with new videos because we love pianos, we love to share what we know, and we love uh, to grow our community of musicians and piano lovers all over the world.
My name's Stu Harrison. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.